Donkey Kong, the 1981 Nintendo arcade classic that brought Mario and Donkey Kong into the world back when Mario was a carpenter named Jumpman and Donkey Kong was the bad guy. It was a major hit and, along with Mario, made Donkey Kong a superstar. Happy landing, you pieces of asses! Look at his teeth. They're just a bunch of pluses. Donkey Kong was king. He was king over King Kong. And even Universal Studios couldn't stop him by trying to sue Nintendo, claiming him to be a King Kong copy. Just because they're both gorillas, have the same last name, and like to climb things with chicks, doesn't make them copies. Right? So Donkey Kong was later ported to ColecoVision and Nintendo, but they removed the opening and the pie level. That's gorilla shit! Why do they do that? They're still brilliant, unlike the Atari 2600 and Intellivision versions. Look at this giant pixelated mess with only two of the four levels. Nothing looks or sounds like the arcade game. There's no music. Why is Donkey Kong snot green? And is he holding black piano keys with his arms? He looks like a giant Goomba. Pauline's red and blue. There's lightning struck umbrellas. Mario's not Mario, nor Jumpman. The hammer floats around his head. And what are these? Mutated seahorses instead of fireballs? What about the controls? They stink. I'd have more fun letting a gorilla hammer coconuts up my nostrils. At least the numbers look nice. The 2600 version is impossibly worse. There's still only two of the four levels, and no music. But not only are the controls worse, Gingerbread Kong throws giant cookies, only moves when I climb, Mario's never been fatter, the hammer floats around his nose, and what are these? Fire slugs? They couldn't even put the word oil on the barrel. The fire slugs don't even come out of it because they're only at level 2. So why does it exist? As for the graphics and sound, even for the 2600, they boil watery cow shit. You can't even fall off these platforms or commit suicide by touching Donkey Kong. And your lives are just rectangles. Mario icons would have been nice. You can't climb straight up or down a series of ladders. You have to get off each one before climbing the next. You can't climb these ones at all, so why do they exist? And why do none of them have edges? They're just floating lines. And when climbing them, his head disappears. Both games don't even show Donkey Kong fall at the end. Some say Coleco deliberately made these ports shitty to make their ColecoVision port look even better, but who knows. So after Donkey Kong came Donkey Kong Jr., a 1982 classic. Jumpman, thankfully renamed Mario and becomes a plumber, is a bad guy for once, kidnaps Donkey Kong, and Junior Boy needs to save him. You know, this Donkey Kong actually becomes Cranky Kong in Donkey Kong Country, and Donkey Kong Jr. becomes the new Donkey Kong. 
So, is Donkey Kong a name or a title? Anyway, Donkey Kong Jr. was later ported to ColecoVision and Nintendo, with all four levels. But then Donkey Kong took a dump inside the 2600 and in television, and voila! Two more disgraces. Nothing resembles the arcade game. There's only three of the four levels, and the last two are in the wrong order. Look, the cage disappears at the end of the second level, but not at the end of the last. It's so easy to fall off the vines and die, because the controls are so torturous. You have to force everything you do, and you're always getting stuck. It would be easier riding a shark through a bunch of fucking dunes. Down! No! Vine leaves would have been nice. Gingerbread Kong only moves when I climb. The crocodiles are just three moving lines. And you can't even kill them because they removed the falling fruit. Sometimes they keep going down the same vine I need to climb. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Hurry up! I just want to get up there. Why am I still playing this? How long does it take? No! The graphics are ugly, and as for the sound, it would be less irritating listening to a thousand coughing seagulls. <laughs> At least there's music and the water moves. The Intellivision version is barely better. But Donkey Kong looks like Frogger, and like Mario, never moves. His cage doesn't even have any bars, and Junior Boy looks like a weird alien. The music stops when sound effects play. It's too annoying. And why? WHY ARE THEY YELLOW AND PURPLE? WHY?! Eventually, these games were ported to every console ever made, and were even combined to make Donkey Kong Classics for Nintendo, even though they already existed for the system as individual games. So what's the point? The Donkey Kong Country music's pretty cool, though. Then Donkey Kong 3 was ported to Nintendo. You control this asshole named Stan, who should be Mario, at this weird jungle, spraying bugs in Donkey Kong's ass after he punches two beehives. Now why aren't the insects attacking Donkey Kong? And why does the game have such a scary atmosphere to it? Overall, like the arcade version, it sucks. Moving on. Donkey Kong Jr. Math. What a wonderful idea. Math and video games. Because kids love math! So your junior boy going around, collecting numbers to solve math equations before Pink Boy, Player 2, fall in the water, go back here. It can even be used as a shortcut to a number you want. The only punishment would be if it brought you away from that number. It's stupid because drowning is warping. Adding and subtracting before multiplying and dividing can save a lot of time. 150 plus 9 plus 9 times 4 plus 2 equals 674. I can't take it anymore. Exercise! Four twenty-three times eighty-three. Well, that's easy. It's thirty-five thousand one hundred nine. But we have to solve the middle first. Ah, oh, shit! I meant to put nine. Guess what? You can't go back to correct a mistake. If you mess up once, you have to start all over again. Can't fuck around with this math game. Now, in order to restart, you have to complete the equation. But, if it's going to be wrong anyway, then what's the point of completing it? Now if you do skip an equation, you cheer like you accomplished something. So that's enough of this garbage. Donkey Kong Country, a Super Nintendo classic. Donkey Kong and his best buddy Diddy Kong barrel blast their way through treacherous jungles, dangerous waters, and spooky mines to recover their stolen bananas. The graphics are impossibly amazing for Super Nintendo. Music is outstanding, controls are nearly perfect, gameplay is genius, and it all shines even brighter with that triumphant Donkey Kong atmosphere. Can't get any more Donkey Kong than this. Check this out. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Are you kidding me? I don't believe it. Look! Two Donkey Kongs! 
There's really no point having all these cranky cabins. They're annoying, and you just end up skipping them anyway. If you need help, read the guidebook. Don't these levels look like Ewok villages? There's so many illusions. Lions, green skulls, and look, the trees have eyes. See you later, alligator. The end? Oh, it's not over yet. In a while, crocodile. Now it's over. Donkey Kong Country 2, as brilliant as the first, is an awesome adventure through pirate ships, volcanoes, and roller coasters. The Thornbush levels are fucking dreamlike. Donkey Kong Country 3, as brilliant as the second, is a tubular journey through giant waterfalls, rocky mountains, and freezing snow. Damn, this music's nightmarish. Hey look, a Nintendo 64 in a Super Nintendo game. Anyway, Donkey Kong safe napped. Again. Oh, and Diddy Kong safe napped. Now how can you have Donkey Kong Country games without Donkey Kong? These might as well be Diddy Kong Country and Kitty Kong Country. You should be able to play as Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong in all of them. Why do they keep getting ape napped? King K. Rool wants to exchange them for their bananas. Now, why does a giant crocodile want to steal their stupid bananas so badly anyway? What's he gonna do with them? Rule the world? They're just bananas! Besides, they'd rot before he ever got them anyway. So, leave the Kongs alone and go pick your own fucking bananas! You know what would have been nice? Donkey Kong Country 4. But, no. Instead, we just had to get a bunch of crappy ports. Now let's talk about Donkey Kong Country Legend of the Crystal Coconut, just for fucks and giggles. It's a pretty decent movie, but some things don't make sense. To know everything, you must give up everything. To know everything, I must give up everything. Why must he give up everything? Fucking bitch. I think Inka Dinkadoo is probably looking for something more important than that, DK. What's more important than my tie collection? The Crystal Coconut, for one. <laughs> That's it. I had to give the Crystal Coconut away. So the Crystal Coconut by itself is everything because it's most important. That doesn't make any sense. Isn't everything supposed to be everything? Who are you gonna give it to? Well... King Karuo! Why not just give it to Diddy Kong instead of King K. Rule? What was he thinking? Inka, future ruler here, I did exactly as you said. So, start doling out them secrets. To know everything, one must give up everything. Uh oh, I think you goofed, DK! So, did giving the Crystal Coconut to King K. Rule work? No. Dumbass. Why not just tell the statue that you already gave up everything? You don't really own anything anyway, besides a few bananas and your tie. After that, King K. Rool gets his guards to try to give the coconut back to Cranky Kong, because he thinks it's a trick. He just gave it to you? It's a trick. But Cranky doesn't want it, because he also thinks it's a trick. We're returning the crystal coconut. It's a trick. Meanwhile, Donkey Kong goes back to King K. Rool to try to get it back, I WANT THE CRYSTAL COCONUT BACK! Not knowing that King K. Rule already got his guards to give it back to Cranky. Then King K. Rule decides he wants it back. DO NOT TAKE THE CRYSTAL COCONUT BACK TO CRANKY! BRING IT BACK TO ME! But Donkey Kong gives it to this pirate, who gives it back because of a stupid oath. But as a pirate, and a scourge of the seven seas, I vows to come back, cause we know, we know, that's what pirates do. I steal booty! Why not steal it now? I knew there was something odd Where's about King K. Rule's tail? You sure I'm not some kind of monkey? Or you be as croc as they come, Donkey Croc. Here, seize for yourself. Okay, you don't need a mirror to see yourself. And wouldn't you wonder why sometimes you're at a different angle in the mirror? <laughs> Stole your throne, King Karul, sir. Donkey Kong stole your throne. 
I'm aware of that, General Clump. But the question I want answered is... Why? You know, this movie really is brilliant. He stole his throne. That's so random, it's hilarious. A recently lost memory can be restored by... Hi, Grinch! Ho! Oh, come on. Why ask when he's one microsecond away from the answer? That's it! What's it? And he doesn't even answer them? Uh, magical powers! <laughs> you think so? Hey! My banana phone! It's gone! Probably stole it so they could spy on us! How can they spy on them? If they can only hear them through the banana if it's on. Just keep it off. Let's radio them. Then hang up. Call just to hang up? That would only serve as a minor inconvenience, so why bother? Besides, they just call them back right away. I mean, they're walkie-talkies. Hey, Dickies, what should we do with this shiny new amulet? You mean the one that is even more magical than the crystal coconut? No one can find out we're hiding this magical, mysterious amulet in the forbidden forest. Pump! What did he say? Pump! Crusher! To the forbidden forest! How could they fall for that? Why would they deliberately talk about the coconut while the banana is on right beside them, especially when they know the other banana is stolen? It's obviously a prank. Besides, even if they did hide it in the Forbidden Forest, how would they know where to find it? So Donkey and Diddy tell Cranky about their brilliant prank, but then Cranky pranks them back by telling them that they must hide the amulet in the Forbidden Forest, where no one will ever find it because it's evil. Go to the Forbidden Forest and hide it! Yeah, right after they pranked King K. Rool by telling him that they hid it in the Forbidden Forest. No way am I going to the Forbidden Forest of Congo Bongo? Yeah, no way we're going to hide it there. Why would we do that just after we told the bad guys that we hid it there as a practical joke? I don't believe it. You're scared. Scared? No, he's smart for once. I'm not. I'm just... Smart, because we just told the bad guys that we hid it there. Tell them that, because you're smart. Looking out for you, little buddy. I take the smart comment back. Why is everyone so stupid? Honestly! It's just a practical joke! <laughs> practical joke! <laughs> practical joke! Okay, who left the banana on? Honestly. The crystal coconut. I gotta tell you dudes, you are riding some serious negative waves. But you're in luck. I have cosmic jurisdiction to assign mantras. But before I can do that, you dudes will need a major cosmic cleansing and total clearing of the chakras. What's he saying? So the pirates come back in Donkey Kong's absence and steal the coconut, all thanks to Cranky's practical joke. So everyone finds out they were pranked, then Cranky tells Donkey and Diddy to get the coconut back from the pirates. They find the ship, but Cranky tells them to go back to the Forbidden Forest, because that's where one of the pirates went with the coconut to meet King K. Rule after he passed that dumbest prank in the world onto them. So Donkey Kong finally gets the coconut back, turns out the amulet was Funky's hood ornament, and they all lived happily ever after. Overall, this movie's okay. It's funny, stupidly genius, and leaves you with a happy feeling at the end. Donkey Kong 64 was Donkey Kong's triumphant leap to the third dimension. This mighty adventure is as fantastic as any Donkey Kong country. However, the camera can be annoying at times, there's a lot of aimless wandering and backtracking, and there's too many items you have to collect. Look, why can't I pick up these red bananas? Well, the characters can only collect the items of their color. So I have to go all the way back to the barrel and switch to Diddy Kong, then go all the way back to collect the bananas. This gets very irritating, especially later on in the game. How did King K. Rule go from this to this? And why is his left eye so big? They should both be the same size. It's ugly. Yeah. What? I just collected my first banana. This is my second? Wait, I still only have one? What's going on here? Why is Wrinkly Kong a ghost? Bring her ass back to life, damn it! It's depressing! And what's up with Candy Kong? Why does she keep changing? Keep her like this! Even with a few annoyances, this game's still marvelous. It's just like Banjo-Kazooie, and you've just gotta love that DK crap.
included as a bonus is the best Donkey Kong port. And look, there's the pie level. It took 18 years, but we finally got it. How high can you get? Kids, say no to drugs. Diddy Kong Racing, a fabulous racing game. The imagination implemented is astonishing. Hey look, it's Science World. Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, and 3 suck. Controls are decent, but the graphics are incredibly detailed for Game Boy. In fact, they're so detailed, it's hard to see through certain areas, which could be deadly. And where's the classic balloon pop? In Donkey Kong Country, when you die, you get a humorously satisfying balloon pop. But here, you get nothing. Climbing ropes is awkward, and if you jump below an upper ledge, you have a split second to grab back on. So if you're above a pit, and the rope is really short, you'll feasibly fall and die. Fuck! When you jump on rope, you keep changing positions. So when bees are flying around, you'll most likely swing into one. Fuck! Why is it so hard not to change positions? 13 years after Donkey Kong came Donkey Kong. Same name, different game. So change the damn name! It continues the arcade series and it's pretty good. I love how Mario just stands there and watches Donkey Kong take Pauline away. Must Donkey Kong do that thing with his bum? This game is extremely generous with the extra lives. Rarely will you ever get game over. 10 years after Donkey Kong came Mario vs Donkey Kong. And it's also pretty good. Stop promoting bestiality! It's just wrong! And how is this another Mario vs Donkey Kong when you only play as the mini robot Marios? Bosses are too easy, gameplay sucks, moving on. DK King of Swing, an unintuitive mess. The graphics are bad. The Game Boy Advance can display graphics that are superior to the Super Nintendo, yet Donkey Kong Country looks so much nicer than this garbage. Even with the two-dimensional style, they could be better. The overly simplified controls are also bad. Basically, you only use the R and L buttons, yet controlling Donkey Kong is still awkward as fuck, especially throwing rocks at enemies. And the levels are so arduous. Cheap deaths are not uncommon. It's a pain in the ass, and it all gets so dull, so quickly. The biggest annoyance is that it's so easy to fall from the very top all the way down to the very bottom. DK Jungle Climber. Same game, same pain. Right in the ass. What's next? Donkey Kong Cubed? That would have been awesome, but no. Instead, we got Donkey Konga, a damn music game. You play by clapping and drumming these bongos, which do kick ass, but they're so embarrassing. Look at me, I'm Donkey Kong! It's too simplistic and gets dull very quickly. Most of the songs are awesome, but you know what would have been nice? Donkey Kong Country music. But no, instead we got songs like Row 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 Your Boat and The Itsy Bitsy Spider that make you feel like a little baby. Hey, let's make a Donkey Kong music game with only one Donkey Kong song and a bunch of kitty ones for all the kitties that weren't even born when Donkey Kong Country came out. Donkey Konga 2. Same fucking game. Donkey Konga 3. Again, same fucking game. But thankfully, it was only released in Japan. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. A true Donkey Kong game. And it rocks. Yeah, you use the bongos again, but their innovation only adds brilliance. Playing with the regular controller is just complete ass. But sometimes, even the bongos are irritating. However, the main problem is that the game gets dull after a while. So what's next? Donkey Kong Wii? No. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, one of the worst Donkey Kong games of all time. It was supposed to come out for the GameCube to replace the cancelled Donkey Kong Racing, the sequel to Diddy Kong Racing, but came out for the Wii instead. You'd assume you could play with the bongos again, but no. Even though they ride bongos, and you can plug bongos into the Wii, you can only play by shaking the Wiimote and Unshot. You can't even play with the GameCube controller. The motion controls are cool, but really, it's like typing with mittens. The controls are horrible, and actually make me appreciate those damn bongos. Now why are the characters so shiny? Are they covered with wax? This game could have been a classic. It would have been so much better if you could use the fucking bongos. 
Besides that, it's slow, the graphics stink, and it shoots rotten bananas up Donkey's ass. This game is a disgrace to the ape's legacy. Donkey Kong made me a gamer. Donkey Kong was my childhood, but now he's ruined. He's the angry video game nerd.